WBS or Work Breakdown Structure is a method by which codes are used to break down a project into tasks and subtasks. In MS Project, you have to use WBS for your work breakdown structure and as a unique identifier for each activity. MS Project automatically assigns WBS codes to your activities. I've just inserted a WBS column. Please note that these codes can be modified even further. For instance, if I indent a few activities, it inserts sub WBS codes. 1.5 has been converted to 1.5.1 and 1.5.2 for subtasks. And you can also define new WBS codes. So for that, go to your WBS icon and you start by inserting a project code. I'll name this project PROJ1. And subsequently, you can insert code masks where additional suffixes may be added to your already defined project code. So the first one, you could use characters which are unordered and you get three asterisks which you can change according to your requirements whether it is design or construction etc. Next you could have numbers, uppercase letters and also lowercase letters. So I'm going to choose one of each and please leave the tick marks on at the bottom of the menu which is generate WBS code for new task and verify uniqueness of new WBS codes. Obviously this is very important. So once you've done that the WBS has been recoded and now the asterisks can be changed to suit your summary bar. So for the first one it's general conditions so I'll call it GCO and everything has been recoded. Now for the next summary bar you have long lead procurement. I'm going to change that to PRO and it's been changed. And you can do the same thing for all the other summary bars. So this is a method to be used to define your own WBS codes for your program. Coding activities for delay and disruption events. It is generally good practice to insert a custom field for coding delay or disruptive events. Now there are several ways to do this. You could have a lot of delay or disruptive events hidden within your task names. This is a method that I use to keep everything organized. So these are the steps that need to be undertaken. First of all, create a filter to identify all the hidden delay or disruptive events within your tasks. So let's do that. So this is a customized filter. You can create as many customized filters as you want. I'm going to create one for delay and disruption. So this is the way to do it. The field name is going to be name, which is the task name that you see there. And the test will be containing a text for delay or disruption. Click save and now we apply this filter in order to look at all the delay and disruptive events and here they are. Now what I want to do is to create a custom field for all for these delay and disruptive events. So for that right click and click on custom field. I've already created one for delay and disruption. I'm going to create a new one. So I'll call it delay and or disruption. Click OK. Once more. And now we need to insert this custom column. So right click, insert column, type in delay. And there we have it, delay and or disruption. Click on that. And populate this column depending on whether the activities are related to delay or disruption. And there you have it. So it is generally good practice to do this while you're entering the activities. The benefit is that now we can filter this very easily by delay, disruption or both. So this is one way of coding your delay and disruption events. 
And with that, we come to the end of this video tutorial.